What's going on guys, it's Craig Patterson from DS Sports as always and following on from the Premiership Roundup we are looking at the rest of the three leagues in Scotland. We will start off in the Championship and we started off on Friday night, BBC Scotland this was shown on, it was Dunfermline against Dundee and a big example of what we could expect from the new handball rules in football. A couple of pretty contentious handballs, controversial handballs but nonetheless sort of falling on from the rules of the game. I know that I think Michael Stewart I think was commenting on, commentating on the game and he really did not like especially the first penalty. It finished 2-2 East End Park, Dunfermline and Dundee. Ryan Dow making the most of some really poor defensive errors from I think it was Forrest, is it For, sorry Forster at the back. Um, but yeah Ryan Dow capitalising on a good through ball and then slotting home past Jack Hamilton the goal and then Kevin Nesbitt a notorious goal scorer I think he won the tartan boot the golden boot in Scotland after a 30 plus goal, se 30 plus goal season with Rafe Rovers last season has now moved to East End Park and got his tally off and got the second goal but then two Danny Johnson penalties I think that's a very good sign in for Dundee by the way um, from Hamilton from sorry Motherwell should I say not Hamilton obviously bit of a bit of a Close rivalry there, can't get those two mixed up. But two penalties for him. The first one, like I say, was one that was very controversial. Second one, probably just as controversial, you could argue. But nonetheless, it was on the second half, it was 2 1 before the half time. But Dundee managing to come back and snatch a point in Fife. We then move into the Saturday games and Alwa and Party Fissel. Well, you could have looked at this and thought Party Fissel could have had Alwa here. Alwa still a part time side but Alwa didn't go in front just before half time, 10 minutes from then Alan Troughton, well we all know about his goal scoring prowess and he got his league tally off to us to uh, off the zero column and in to the goals column he started his goal tally should I say um, I made that sound a bit stupid there he started off his goal tally Alan Troughton 1-0 he made it just before half time and then Boy Cardo, the winger for Paddy Fussell, one that I enjoyed watching when I went to see them went to, went to see him play at Howell and um he got a goal in the second half to equalise for Paddy Fussell and that's how it ended. It ended one one. Uh in the drill and then we saw the opening game at Gayfield at Broth began their championship season on what is flag day for them as well, obviously celebrating their League One promotion, their League One Championship but now they are in the Championship and they welcome pa Palmerston Dumfries side Queen of the South and it finished 0-0 so I both got up, got their first point of the campaign but they kind of had to hold on in the end Queen of the South brought on a fair barrage of attacks but it finished goalless there as Dick Campbell got his team off to got their points tally going for the league season and then the goals fired in at the next two places at Air United and at Dundee. We'll come to Dundee United in a second and one particular man. But we'll talk about his former team. It was Air United 4, Morton 2 and Moffat, McCowan, For Forrest and McGuffey all getting goals all over the place. I was listening to open all mics and it just it sounded like all the goals were coming from there. Um, a great start for Ian McCall's men after a good Betfred Cup campaign and then Morton with Tor Tor uh, sorry, Tormelty should I say and Nicky Cadden, Nicky Cadden signing from Motherwell in the summer and then it was David Hopkins, David Hopkins men travelling to United and not only getting the two goals but conceding four in the process for, so a few more defensive stuff, to, defensive things to work on for him and then we talk about, we talked about a and we're talking about their former striker Lawrence Shankland. What a start it was for him at his new club. He scored against Hearts in, pre in the Bedford Cup, but he got his league campaign off to a wonderful start. Looking at potentially the tartan boot already. But we said that before, he didn't quite get it because of injuries, but four goals for Lawrence Shankland at Tannadice and a 4-1 win. It was the Lauren Shank so Lauren Shankland show against Inverness, Cali Fissel. Shanklin put them in front in the opening 10 minutes and then Tom Walsh equalised for Cali Fissel for the Highland side. 
but in the same minute, like literally seconds later, Shanklin got the second of his four and then he ran away with it himself at the end. So a brilliant start for Dundee United. They went to the top of the table just ahead of Air United. Both scoring the same goals, but Dundee United conceding one less. And then you've got Air United just behind them in second with three with the six teams all on one point. Dunfermline, Dundee, Alwab Partick and Argrove and Queen of the South falling on behind. And then Morton and Cali Fissle, the two at the bottom having the only defeats of the opening weekend. We then go to the next weekend. We're talking about Partick Fissle against Dundee United. What a game that promises to be at Fur Hill. It's a Friday night game, 7.05 kickoff. Make sure to watch that on BBC Scotland this weekend. Dundee and Air United, another really nice game. There's going to be a lot of fantastic games in the Championship this season. It promises to be a brilliant season. But there we go. Dundee and Air United at Dens Park, the Kilmack Stadium. 3 o'clock kickoff there. Inverness against Arbroath. Arbroath, a good opening weekend. Not, not suffering a potentially inevitable defeat, Queen of the South. So, yeah, one, one that's going to be a tough one for them going up to Inverness, Cali Fissle but one that Dick Campbell can potentially sink his, sink his teeth into. And then you've got Morton against Alwa. Decent game at Capilo. Morton looking to capitalise, after looking to uh, regroup after an opening day defeat. Alwa with an opening draw against Party Fissel. And then Queen of the South against Dunfermline. Another really good game at Palmerston after they both got points on the opening day. So that's the championship, we now move on to League One and it was a great start for four for Athletic as they went to Airdrie and won 2-0. They moved to the top of the table with the only two goal victory of the weekend. It was Andy Jackson and Callum Tappan getting the two goals just after the second half. Two quick goals and a good opening performance for Jim Weir's men as the Loons head to the top of League One. We then moved to, Bro to Broadwood, the pitch has finally been relayed, it was 1-0 between Clyde and East Fife, it was David Goodlow with an early penalty, and then Dowds with the goal, I think it was just after the break, correct me if I am wrong, but it was an opening, it was points shared all round between Clyde and East Fife, and then we went, went to Dumbarton, it was Dumbarton 0, Rafe Rovers 1, Rafe Rovers with a goal by Anderson 14 minutes before the end and Rave Rovers got the opening got their first three points of the campaign. Peterhead and Falkirk, Falkirk in the third tier making their first appearance. They went up to League Two Champions Peterhead and they drew 0-0. So a brilliant opening point for McInally's men. Yeah, they faced quite a barrage of early attacks earlier on but slowly came into the game but not enough to sneak three points out of it. So opening points for both Peterhead and Falkirk there. And another draw in the South Western Ayrshire. It was 2-2 two -two finished between Stranraer and Montrose. Hilton and Pignatiello getting the goals for Stranraer and Masson and Callahan. Sorry, Mason. Sorry, yeah, it was Terry Masson and Callahan getting the two goals there, Masson. Famous, Terry Masson famously scoring the goal that beat Mon uh, not Montrose obviously St Johnston in the Betfred Cup at Lynx Park but nevertheless a two, opening 2-2 two, two draw there as after Srinra had a brilliant league, um, league Cup campaign of their own and now we head into next weekend's fixtures this, week, this weekend coming fixtures it's East Fife against Peterhead at Bayview in Methville it's going to be Falkirk against Dumbarton, Falkirk Stadium hosting their first League One tie in dear knows how long. Um, Falkirk needs to get a win to really kick start their season and get the get the teams firing. It'll be Forfar against Stranraer, so a opening. So Forfar, I remember, have not lost at home since December and that record continued for the League Cup despite having to play St Johnston haven't lost at home since December. They'll be looking to keep that run going against the side from the South West who are, in, who are in very good form. Let's not forget, it's going to be Montrose against Airdrie at Lynx Park. Lynx, Airdrie looking to recover after an opening day home defeat to Forfar and looking to kickstart their season they're highly fancy to potentially finish in the top four against Montrose who are arguably one of the favourites to go down some bookies have suggested, especially looking at the title odds where Montrose were the least fancy team to win the league. Whether that necessarily is transferred into 
relegation odds, I'm not quite sure. Please forget, please forget me if I am wrong. But Montrose were the least fancy, whereas Airdrie were more fancy than Farfar and obviously lost in the opening defeat. But nevertheless, I'm going off on a tangent. The final game, the three, 3 o'clock Saturday game, is Rafe against Clyde. That's going to be a really good game at Starks Park. Rafe looking to, looking to continue their own really good home form as Clyde travel to travel away in League One for the first time this season. We have finished League One, we are now into League Two. There's one place to really go, but we'll go in alphabetical order, we'll get there eventually. We start at Brechin, Brechin coming off the back of two successive relegations and Barry Smith's side didn't start the season well at all. Well fancied and an athletic travelled to Glebe Park to the hedge and got the 1-0 victory. It was Swinglehurst who scored a barrel load in the tail end of last season himself. Got again the opening goal, I think it was 25 minutes from the end or midway through the second half. And Barry Smith started off with a with an opening day defeat. And well, what a performance this was. Cove Rangers 5, Edinburgh City now. Edinburgh City with the highest with the highest ranked League 2 team remaining this season based on last year's table considering that Perth and Clyde both got promoted so the third place team, the highest ranked team in the third place like I say was Edinburgh City and they got hammered by newly promoted Cove Rangers. Cove Rangers were favourites and not entirely unsurprisingly so to potentially get a second successive promotion into League 1 next season and they proved their they proved their strength early on. Mitch Meganson, how many will he get? He's put himself in for Tartan Boot, Tartan Boot contention, as we could, as we perhaps predicted, with two goals, very quick goals after the first half hour or so. Harry Milne getting two for himself as well, and Jordan Brown at the end, sealing what was a brilliant opening win at the Balmoral State at the Balmoral Stadium for Paul Hartley's side. But it's not worth forgetting that Edinburgh were down to nine men in that affair as Liam Henderson, I think, got sent off for two yellows and then the and then the goalkeeper Chris Hantel also saw red for a professional foul close to the end of the game. So not a great start if you're Edinburgh City, but one that you will no doubt enjoy if you're a member of the Cove Rangers fan base. And then we go to Elgin City, another one for the Tartan. Tartan boot contention, well certainly the League 2 um, league goal scorer in the fit competition, it's Shane Sutherland who scored two of his own in a 3-0 home win for Elgin City against Cowden Beef and then Ewan Spark got the third in that one as well, Cowden Beef down to 10 men after Herd was, Herd was sent off in the second half, so a poor start for Gary Boland's men, but Cowden Beef going down 3-0 at Borough Briggs. Steny began life in League One against sorry, began life in League Two after the relegation from League One as they faced home side Albion. Sorry, as they as they were at home to Albion Rovers. And Albion Rovers they went so long without a victory last season and they got one on the opening day and it was probably one of the toughest away games apart from perhaps Cove Rangers. They went to Ochoview and won 3-2. It was Fotheringham, Easton Burn getting the three goals for them and Hopkirk and Cook getting two goals for Steny and Albion won 3-2, a brilliant home win, a brilliant away win for them after a pretty amazing Bedford Cup finishing above St Mirren in Group H in that one. And then and finally Stirling, Stirling Albion hosted Queen's Park and it was Galt who got the winner 14 minutes from time, the 76th minute. And then McGeehy, the centre half, getting sent, sent off for Stirling Albion. I think it was about seven minutes before the end there to mean that Kevin Rukovic's side went down 1-0 at, at home to Queen's Park. So looking ahead to, to match day two, we've got Albion against Cove, so that's going to be an interesting game. Albion in really good form, surprisingly good form you could argue after a pretty poor last season. Imagine to beat the drop, quite convincingly obviously, but Still, I said they weren't in very good form. They started off the season well. They will host Cove as Cove travel in League One for the very first time. They'll welcome them to Clifton Hill. And then against Elgin, two winning sides on the opening day as well. They will play at Galabank in Dumfriesshire. 
Cowan and Beef against Stirling, two sides that lost on the opening day. They will be playing at Central Park. Gary Bowen against Kevin Rukovic there. Edinburgh against Brechin, two sides, two sides that also lost at home. The two on match day one, should I say, not lost at home. But two sides are needing to kind of lick their wounds a wee bit. Edinburgh are going to be having a couple of players suspended. Brechin need to travel and need to get a win off the mark. And then it'll be Queen's Park against Stennis Muir. At, now, I don't actually know, I'm not actually aware of where Queen's Park actually play, that's quite poor of me, but I'll need to double check that whether Queen's Park are actually at Leicester Hamden or whether they are still at Hamden. I think they maybe are at a separate stadium away from Hamden Park, especially the National Stadium, should I say. Um, I'll need to look up my my facts on that one, but certainly Queen's Park are at home and they will welcome Stenhouse Muir in League 2, all of those on Saturday afternoon. This rounds up the Football League outside of the outside of the top flight. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, leave a comment, perhaps correct me on some errors, tell me where Queen's Park actually play. Um, but yeah, an interesting opening match day we wouldn't have expected anything less in the Scottish Football League. Let's look forward to match day two. Until then, until the next review, remember to go out and support your local team. Go out and enjoy football, enjoy the game, and we'll see you guys very soon for another video. Take care.